This episode is brought to you by Dallas Hempco, home of the Infuse Dinner. What's the deal, brother? So for the people who don't know you, please introduce yourself. My name is LaPat. Go by Big Hefe the Hit Machine, Mr. Rodeo himself. Um, the artist behind the hit single Rodeo. I don't wanna fuck you right now. Reverse that car, girl, I'm fucking right now. Featuring Big J, remix featuring Flo Millie, Billboard artist, you know what I mean? Tart Topper. And where are you uh, from? I'm originally from New Orleans, Louisiana, but I was raised in Houston. So that's news for me because this whole time I've been thinking, I've been talking to him. I mean, I'm sure you, you, you're a Houstonian, yeah, of course. Yeah, Acres home, big foes. But I'm going to say something about New Orleans and Louisiana, period. The tannin that come from, like, is it the water? Yeah, I think it was it's like, water. I'm serious, bro, because... You know, New Orleans is an island. We're surrounded by water, so I think they, they definitely pumped our water line, man. Yeah. Yeah, every time I go to New Orleans, bro, the, the feeling is just different. Right. Like, I look around, like, you don't know the slums until you go to the slums. Like, I'm just being honest, like, it ain't a knock against New Orleans or nothing, but, like, when I go down there, the vibe is just, it's gloomy, yep, it's, it's dark, dark yeah. you know what I mean? And it, I don't know what it is, but it's the talent. It's that cloud. Yeah. It's that, that, that dark cloud. But I also tell people, though, you know, they say, like, you know, that music was the, that key opener to the soul. Like, I feel like that was our only only taste of freedom, you know what I'm saying? We set yeah. the line there. Uh, you know, even church sometimes, you feel me? Like, that was our, our glory out, but... So that's over with, it's back to that dark alley for sure. Nah, for sure. Did you grow up in church? Yeah, definitely. I had to play the drums and sing just like this. So, yeah. I, so you can tap on the table. You can do that for next two times. Yeah, I do that all day. That's how I used to write my music <laughs> originally. Nah, for sure. So, Rodeo, the new single. We're going to get right into Rodeo. Chart Topper. Yeah. Banger. Every time I hear it, I'm bobbing my head. I even did a 66 to it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, what was your mentality uh, when, you, when you went in the lab and when you wrote Rodeo? Uh, when I wrote it, I was actually uh, down there in the valley, bro. I was locked up on the transfer. Okay. On Lopez unit. And I was playing chess with this dude from New Orleans, man, named Dennis Shaw. He actually called me yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He an older dude. And he used to play me in chess. He used to always tell me how, like, the R&B scene fucked in. Like, man, you new niggas don't know what y'all doing. After Chris Brown, there wasn't no more R&B. I'm like, well, you know, things change. You feel me? But I'm telling him, like, I can take those songs and I can revisit them today. And showed you that if I if, it, if if that song was made today, this is what it sound like, basically. You yeah, feel me? Sure. But Rodeo was so hard, I couldn't finish it. All I had the chorus. Yeah. That's yeah. all I had when I left. You feel me? And like the, the beginning part of the first verse. But I had came home, dropped a bunch of the different music, and I ain't have a song. Like I needed a song. Like I'm like I'm tired. I'm down to thirty. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I need a track. I need a song. Like I know I can sing, but I need a song. Feel me? Yeah. And I was humming a chorus on live, and still is that still can't remember what girl it was. She like, you need to make that a song. And I was like, damn, yeah, that's that's that sexy, that nasty shit. They gonna be with that. For you sure. Me? And I always, since I originally started writing the song, I love my first line on that bitch. Yeah. That was always my. That was my. That was my goose. My golden goose egg. <laughs> I was like, that line right there was sell me a million dollars. And, and what opportunities has presented itself since the release of Rodeo? Oh, uh, I done met all the stars down there. I yeah. done been on tour with Tink and Jacquees and Santa. I done opened up for Boosie, uh, Wayne, who else? Man. Yeah. Everywhere. I didn't I didn't have some of the greatest features. I didn't work with Flo Millie. I didn't work with Hunto. Yeah. I didn't work with Breezeland. I didn't work with Hitmaker. Yeah. I didn't work with some of the biggest producers. Shout out Young Bird, man. I'm calling Bird. I'm signing 300. <laughs> I, I sat in the room with Kevin Lyles. Oh, yeah. Celine Bob. Like, I, yeah. I set the table with some big dogs. Like, it, they changed my life, though, for sure. Most so, definitely. So, you know, nowadays, a lot of people feel like when you're an artist, you got to be, you got to have a gimmick attached to you. You got to have some beef or some drama attached to you. So, me looking at you and watching you for the last few months, I don't see no beef. No. I don't see no gimmick. I don't see none of that. I see raw talent. So, what do you have to say about the people in the industry that feel like, oh, you got to have some bullshit going on? Actually, right some bullshit different. just came up, and I was just on my live explaining it. Like, they talk about the king of R&B in Houston. Like, you okay. Know what I mean? And I, I, I tell people, like, I just don't feel like we even at our peak to even talk about king. You feel me? Like, yeah. And then when you talk about king... We all can sing. Like yeah. either, all the dudes, they talking about Tanley Raw. Yeah. Who got songs? Like who got tracks? Like who got the momentum? Like bro, I sing all the time. Like not every song I record, I feel like this the one. Now I might be like this is my favorite one, but it ain't gonna be the one I'm gonna be like, hey, 
I got a bad motherfucker. You feel me? Yeah. So I tell him like, you know, instead of trying to have this debate, let's just all put on the show together. You feel me? For sure. And, and let the people decide. Let the, you know what I'm saying? We could call it the the King R&B tour. Who get, who cares? You feel me? But yeah. we it just you know what I mean. The the R&B light in Texas is not shining enough at all. So that the conversation we had is falling on deaf ears. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. unless we finna put it in their face, I don't want to talk about it. And like you say, it ain't no gimmick. It ain't no, I don't got no smoke. Not no R&B smoke. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Because I, mean? I can rap too, like, so I can mix mine up. Like, I'm very yeah. versatile. I'm very creative. Like, it's an art form to me. Like, even my writing, it's like, it's not just going there and making it rhyme. Like, I be like dead ass serious, like with creativity processing and, you know what I mean? Subjecting, you know what I mean? Yeah. Concept songs, like. A birthday song, for example. I just dropped a Christmas record. Yeah. You know what I'm sorry. saying? So, it's it, like, Salim told me, if you want to sing, go stand on the corner and fucking sing to a professional. So, if we're going to be professional, we're going to be professional. You feel me? I can't yeah. have that, that debate when I'm the only one doing numbers. Most most definitely. And so, when people say the R&B scene is dead, what do you have to say to those people who was very critical of R&B music? Do you think it's because of the the generation nowadays, or just so? I think rap it's the time, man. I think yeah. it's the time. I think right now, just because at one point in time, rap was kind of like if we have three, four, five hot rap artists, and everybody else was just R and B. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just the timing, but everybody believe in life after death. We revive. You feel me? Most definitely. Thanks. We back. And you you said you can rap too. Yeah. So you really the best of both worlds. So whenever. I don't feel like R&B is going to ever die. I'm going to no. be real with you. I'm an artist and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rapper, but I write R&B, so Thanks. I'm an R&B guy. Thanks. R&B will never die, but the fact that you have that secondhand talent to get on there and spit some bars, just Thanks. like Chris Brown, of course, Thanks. Thanks. do you feel like that's an advantage for you musically? Yeah, and I feel like because I, excuse me, I feel like because I mix them both, it, it, it'll leave me in the middle. You know what I mean? I call my I call my crap the gumbo pot. It's a mixture of all types of shit. Like, yeah. I was just in Cali doing Afro beats. I'm, you know what I mean? We ended up creating all type of shit. I write for some of their favorite artists out here right now. You yeah. know what I mean? It's just like, the talent don't stop with just the fact that I can sing, rap, write. Like, I really want to create. I really want to sit there, like how we sitting in this motherfucker right now and bring a bunch of motherfuckers together and, and create a song, like shit that, that lives on forever. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I can't. I could just go get a feature from one of a hot artists right now. But if, if you listen to that song 10, 10 years from now, you're going to be like, yeah, that was some cloud chasing shit. Like, yeah. I'm that type of artist, you feel me? I ain't never with all that. I really have to like the record. I don't care who sure. it is on there. You feel me? If you for artists, if I pay for a big feature and they don't do what they're supposed to do, I don't like the song. You feel me? That's it. I don't want to go with it. I don't give a fuck what the name is. For sure. Because the song has to mean something. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Facts. I feel like when it means something, then it's a good song, then the money has to come in. You feel me? Then we get, we get into the bag. Most definitely. Have you had the pleasure to meet Genuine yet? Uh, I performed with him tonight. So this is, this is about to be your first my time meeting. time. I talked to him on the phone, but this is my first time. What do you got to say? I don't know. I might be I might be nervous. I'm a <laughs> natural nervous guy. You yeah. Know? You know what I'm saying? But I'm I'm ready. I'm ready. So what's next for the pet? Um, I got a I got a record coming out called Overstepping, man, with a fire feature. I don't want to speak on it right now. Y'all just gonna look at it, y'all gonna love it. It's definitely a... A Texas highlight, you feel me? I'm definitely showing big love to Texas. Okay. Um, working on my project right now. I work with a bunch of like dope ass artists right now. Uh, I just did some some songs on the uh, Be Someone album with, with uh, Black Diamond Entertainment. Okay. I did a few on that joint, and I've been working with some amazing artists lately. Shout and out Black sure Diamond too, man. Facts. Shout out CN and all them boys. Be Them boys moving and grooving for sure. Yeah, yeah, facts. Uh, I just did a song with Sack Boy KD, Cash Money. Fire video finna drop, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Shout out to PLE, man. I got a bunch of artists on my label that's silly. Like, man, I'm finna drop, man. I feel like I got the ha ha hardest R&B trio on my team right now. Nah, for sure. Facts. And, and what's on the LaPette uh, top five playlist? Spotify, Apple Music, whatever you listen to music on. What's on your playlist right now? Right now, that Yes by Huncho. I don't know, I'm on that every day. Okay. Uh, I've been on that, that, that F... FWM Fredo Bang. Okay. I fuck with that tough. Um Who this for? <laughs> <laughs> I got it. I got oh, it. I got a scratch on some Rollo. <laughs> Uh, Rollo really hard. He's he un, he's he low key under under the cover hard yeah, though. Like don't, don't if you don't listen know. to him, he'll go over him your head. Him and Hunter though, like they yeah. just they just don't they don't even know what's gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, some young Al definitely been on that Al. Mood, eh? <laughs> yeah. Um. 
Who does phone? My top and my fifth one. I'm listening to myself. Most definitely. All the time, every day. Most definitely. And what album can we be expecting on the way soon? Uh, I, I'm, I'm dealing with my my album name, but hey, I promise you, this this is the raw uncut me on this album. Like this is my first my first you know album project I'm gonna drop. Man, I literally all night long nights in there, motherfucker. Like, yeah. Like it, it was because rodeo was just taking so much of my attention and my time. You know what I'm saying that. I had to really go back. You know what I mean? I, I flew to Colorado one deep and spent some time with myself to figure out who I am and what am I doing. Like, yeah. And I, I came up with some songs that, hey, I ain't no turning back from there. I ain't gonna lie. They well, talk about the king. I'm the, yeah. I'm the emperor around this motherfucker. Nah, for sure. <laughs> and where can we find you on social media? Definitely find me at underscore L A H P A T on all platforms. Don't follow me on Twitter, though. I heard they be very nasty. <laughs> Okay, and if you had 60 seconds to speak to anybody, dead or alive, who would it be and what the conversation consist of? Uh, I call my papa and tell him, man, motherfucker, I did it, and you told me I would. Most definitely. <laughs>